Hi, we were talking about lines and angles and this concept is about angles of a triangle. So let's see what is the relationship between three angles of a triangle. As you can see, we already have a triangle here. Let's just start by naming it. Let's call it A, B, C. How about we name the angles as well? We can call them angles 1, 2 and 3. That would be helpful for us. So if this is angle 1, angle 2 and angle 3. So from our previous classes, we already know the relationship between three angles of a triangle. What is it? Yes, the sum of all the three angles is 180 degrees. That means angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 is nothing but 180 degrees. Isn't that right? Great. Now do you think we can prove this using the relationships that we have just seen in the previous concepts? Let's see how. So we are supposed to prove that angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 is nothing but 180 degrees. So how do I go about this? Now let's just do one thing. We'll do a small construction that would help us to prove this particular condition. So what would that construction be? Draw a line parallel to BC. So what I'll do is I'll draw a line passing through A and parallel to BC. Let me call this line M and N. So we've drawn MN which is parallel to BC. Great. Now we see that there are a few more angles formed now. There's this angle which is angle MAB. Let me call this angle 4. And there's another angle, angle NAC. Let me call this angle 5. So we have two more angles, angle 4 and angle 5. We know that M A N is a line. Is it not? Since it is a line, the sum of all the angles that are present on this line is nothing but 180 degrees. That just means angle 3 plus angle 4 plus angle 5 is equal to 180 degrees. So this angle plus this angle plus angle 5 is equal to 180 degrees just because MAN is a line. Great. Now since we know the sum of these is 180 degrees, let me mark this as condition 1. We also see that angle 1, this one, angle 1 would be equal to angle 4. Can you tell me why? Angle 1 would be equal to angle 4. Because we know that MN is parallel to BC and 1 and 4 are nothing but alternate interior angles. And we know that the alternate interior angles formed when two lines are parallel are always equal to one another. So angle 1 is equal to angle 4. And similarly we can say angle 2 would be equal to angle 5 because they are also a pair of alternate interior angles formed when this line AC is the transversal to these two lines BC and MN. So I know angle 4 is nothing but angle 1 and angle 5 is nothing but angle 2. And what I'll do is I'll replace angle 4 and angle 5 in condition 1 by angle 1 and angle 2 respectively. That means instead of angle 4, I'll write angle 1 and instead of angle 5, I'll write angle 2. If you look carefully at what we've got right now and just rearrange it, we'll have angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 equal to 180 degrees. And you know what is this? This is the exact same condition that we were supposed to prove that the sum of three angles of a triangle is nothing but 180 degrees. It's a very simple proof, isn't it? And it's very classy. We just have to do a construction where MN is parallel to BC and always remember MN should pass through this point A. And then we just say that sum of angles on a line is 180 
and just replace the values of angle 4 and angle 5 because alternate interior angles are equal. So we've proved that sum of angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So if I have to write down this theorem, it would be the sum of angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Great. Now we also remember how do we form an external angle? Do we? If we are given a triangle, let's bring back our triangle. So if we are given this triangle, triangle ABC, then how do you know? Then how do you form an external angle to this triangle? What we do is, if we have to form an external angle at this point C, I will just extend this side BC in a straight line, right? So I've extended this line BC, let's say to a point D. Okay. Now this angle formed angle D C A. This angle here, angle D C A is nothing but your external angle. Now there is another way of forming an external angle at point C. You could have said, why do you have to extend BC only? Why don't you extend AC? We could do that as well. So if I extended AC to another point, point E, then this angle formed right here is also an external angle. So angle ECB is also external angle. If we look carefully, AE is a line and BD is another line intersecting at this point C. And hence, this angle here and this angle here are equal because they are vertically opposite angles. So either of DCA or angle ECB are the external angles formed at point C. And since their measures are equal, we can use them interchangeably. That means instead of DCA, you could use ECB or the other way around as well. Similarly, if you had to draw an external angle at point A, what would you have done? In that case, we'll extend one line. Let's extend BA to another point. Let's call this M. Then angle MAC, this one, angle MAC is your external angle at point A. I hope you've understood what external angles are. Do you think there is a relationship between these external angles and the angles of the triangle? Let's try to figure that out. So what I'll do is I'll just concentrate on this particular angle MAC and the other relationships can be derived further. So if I just remove these angles from here, so we know that angle MAC is an external angle at point A, right? So we have to figure out if there's a relationship between this angle and other angles of the triangle. Let me just call these angle 2. I'll mark 2 here. Let this be angle 3. And let this be angle 1. Let me call angle MAC as angle 4. Great. We know that angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees. Why is that? Because the sum of internal angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. That's why. Okay. We also know angle 1 plus angle 4 is equal to 180 degrees. Why is this? We see that M a B is a line and a C is a ray standing on it. And we know that the sum of linear pair of angles is 180 degree. So this is nothing but a linear pair of angles. Hence angle one plus angle four is 180 degrees. Now, do you think we can draw some relationship out of this condition? Let's call it one and this condition. I think we can. Since we have the right hand sides of both equations equal, what I can do is I can equate their left hand sides. That means angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 
would be equal to angle 1 plus angle 4. So angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to angle 1 plus angle 4. So I can see that on both sides I have angle 1. So I can just remove it out. And what I would have is angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to angle 4. Now this here is a very important relationship that we'll use throughout our studies. So that just means that angle 4 here, the external angle is equal to the sum of internal opposite angles, angle 2 plus angle 3. So what you do is, if you are given an external angle like this one, then just ignore the internal angle at that point and take the sum of the other two angles. If we were given an external angle here, this was point E and this let's say was angle 5, then what we had to do was ignore the internal angle at that point, point C and we could have said that angle 5 will be equal to angle 2 plus angle 1. It's pretty simple, isn't it? If we were given an external angle at point B, this one, let's call this angle 6, then at point B, the internal angle is angle 2, just ignore it, and angle 6 would be equal to the sum of the other two, angle 3 and angle 1, angle 3 plus angle 1. So now we know the relationships between external angles to a triangle and the internal angles. So if I have to write this down, this would be, if a side of a triangle is produced, then the external angle so formed is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite angles. They have to be opposite. For example, here angle 5 is the external angle formed when BC is extended to this point E. So angle 5 is formed. Now angle 5 is equal to the sum of interior opposite angles. So opposite. And ignore the angle formed at C. I hope we are clear about the relationships of angles in a triangle. We look at certain examples and how we can use these conditions to solve great many questions. Happy learning!